The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. <laughs> You know, Ethelbert, you and I have a good chance to be famous. How's that, Casey? Well, I figure if a man's known by the company he keeps... Yeah? Then he ought to be known by the company that keeps him. That makes sense. And the company that keeps us is... Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, Photo of the Dead. Nine o'clock in the evening, the big, untidy photographer's room of the Morning Express. The door opens, and Ann Williams. Gosh, it's hot, Casey. Let's go over to the Blue Note. Oh, Annie, I'd like to get out of this joint for a while, but uh, Dad Phelan phoned about half an hour ago and said he wanted to see me. He's making a special trip down here. Dad Phelan? Sure, you met him. He runs a little stationery and cigar store Oh, yes, of course. He lost his wife last year, and he went to her funeral. Yeah, Aunt Maggie, your name was. Well, what does he want to see you about? Well, he said he wanted my advice about something. What? He didn't say... Well, there he is now. Hi, Dad. Oh, Casey, my boy. Hey, it's good to see you, It's Dad. always good to see you. You remember Annie Williams, don't you? Oh, of course. How are you, Miss Williams? Just fine, Mr. Phelan. Now, sit down, Dad. Thanks. Uh, I've got something to tell you, boy. Oh, what's on your mind? Casey, I've heard from Maggie. Uh, huh? She's come back to me from the dead. Mr. Phelan. I've heard her voice, uh, and she sent me a picture from the other world. Her picture. Boy, you know that after Maggie died, well, we'd been together for nearly 50 years, and I didn't know what to do with myself. I know. So I started to read books that told how the the dead sometimes are able to communicate with the living. Books on psychic phenomena? Uh, Yes, Miss Williams. There's a bookshop on 12th Street, Jameson's, that has a lot of those books. Yeah, I've passed it. Yeah, a very nice lady runs it. I went in there a lot. We got acquainted, and... One day she told me about a man. A man with remarkable powers. Uh, so you went to him? Yeah. And last Thursday night, a week ago, boy, Maggie spoke to me while I was there. Uh, what did this man charge you? He wouldn't take a penny. Huh? Here, Casey. Look at this picture. You see what had happened? Above my right shoulder. Oh, there's a ghostly face of a woman, Casey. Yeah. And it's Maggie's face. You recognize it, boy? Yes, yes. Uh, Casey... This picture couldn't have been made by by a trick, could it? Maggie was really with me last night, wasn't she? Yes, sure she was with you, Dad. The, the photo's not a fake? You'd no. know. No, it's it's not a fake. Oh, so glad to hear you say that. Okay. Oh, hold it, Annie. Say, Dad, what's the name of this uh, this man who took this shot? Well, uh, it's kind of a funny name. Uh, Fader Narsi, he... He's an East Indian fellow. He's one of those swamis, huh? He's a fine man. Oh, I'm sure of that. Where does he live? Well, he has a big house on Rankin Avenue, 142. Uh, why? Well, I just wondered. Oh, excuse me, Dan. Yeah. Hello, Casey speaking. Yeah. Okay, Burke, I'll be right up. That was City Desk calling, Dan. I'm sorry, I've got to rush up. Uh, go right ahead, boy. I'll be going. Anyway, you've told me what I wanted to know, and... You've made me very happy. Well, I'm very glad. Uh, good night, Miss Williams. Good night, Mr. Phelan. Uh, good night to you, boy. And a million thanks. Good night, Dad. Casey, that photograph can't be on the left. Of course it isn't. It's a crude double exposure. That ghost face was taken from an old picture of Aunt Maggie that this Fader Narcy fellow got hold of somewhere. Well, why didn't you tell the old man that? Oh, Annie, how could I? Dad wants to believe that this thing's on the level. He, he's happy tonight for the first time since his wife died. But, Annie, after I finish whatever assignment Burke has for me upstairs, I'm going to pay an unsocial call on Swami Fader Narsi. (laughs) 
Oh, hey, Bert, what do you mean? You're sending me out of town tonight? That's what I said, Casey. I just had our Detroit correspondent on the phone. He tells me a honey of a murder broke out there. You may be gone two weeks, maybe a month. And I'm not going? Casey's on this job alone, Williams. You stay here. Now, take this to the cashier and get your expense money, oh. Casey. Your train leaves in 45 minutes. Burke, I ought to see a guy tonight. Here. You can't. Get going, Casey. I want pictures from Detroit tomorrow. Oh, uh, okay. Well, Dad Phelan's been looking after himself for over 70 years. I guess he can do it without my help a few weeks longer. <laughs> Hello. Miss Williams? Yes. This is long distance. I have your call through to Detroit. Oh, thank you. Go ahead, please. Hello. Hello, Casey. Annie, gee, it's great to hear your voice. Anyway, what's up? What's Look, up? Uh, something's happened that we think you ought to know about. Ah, uh, what? I'm at police headquarters with Captain Logan. A few hours ago, your friend, Dad Phelan, was found dead. Dad Phelan? Yes, Casey. And Captain Logan thinks that Swami Feda Nazi was responsible for his death. <laughs> Come on, Logan, let's have the dope on it. Well, Phelan didn't open his store this morning, Casey. A cop on the beat got worried, broke in, and found your friend dead in the back room. He just died in his sleep, huh? Yeah. I talked to Miss Williams after she phoned you, Casey, and we pieced the thing together. Beside the old man's body was that spirit photograph of him and his wife. And in his pocket, we found a bank book that had apparently represented his life savings. Balance was only $21. Yes. But until four days after Miss Williams says he called on you with the express, the balance had been $6,021. Uh, the fake Swami got the 6000 Yeah. And the shock of losing his life savings and learning that the Swami was a fake was too much for him. The Swami gave him the usual routine. Huh? Yeah, racketeers of his type are all alike. After the victim is convinced he's in contact with the dead, he gets a spook message telling him to hand over some money, usually for an investment the ghost recommends. The dough was passed over in cash, and we cops can't do a thing. Logan, that swami killed that old man just as surely as though he'd stuck a gun at his head and pulled the trigger. I know it, but he's not a murderer in the eyes of the law. We can't even prove him a thief. Are you questioning him? Naturally. He denied everything. Well, Logan... I'll talk to Swami Feta Narsi. It won't get you anywhere. Well, I'll see you later. Now, what are you going to do? Well, from what you say, there's only one thing I can do. Beat that guy to a pulp. Good afternoon. Are you Feta Narsi? No, sir. Oh, just a servant, eh? Yes, well, sir. I want to see your boss. What is your name? Casey. You have appointment with the master? No. Fader Narsi received no visitor except by appointment. Well, he received me, big guy. Get out of my way. Wait. Nobody pass Luki. Luki. Yes, master. I will see the gentleman for a moment. What is it you wish, Mr. Casey? So you are. I am Fader Narsi. What do you wish? Hasn't your crystal ball told you? As the police have made some baseless insinuations that cannot be proven, I imagine you were about to do something equally foolish. Yeah. I'm going to knock that grin off your face and your teeth along with okay. it. Yes, sir. Take your hands off of me. Let me go, will you? Lukey, my devoted servant is a Senegalese. Uh, they are noted for their skill in fighting. Uh, Lukey, teach Mr. Casey that it will be very unwise for him to trouble us again. It will be a pleasure, sir. Splendid, Lukey. Now pick Mr. Casey up from where he's fallen and throw him out the door. <laughs> Our story will continue in just a moment. Here's a bargain, a real bargain. A big nine and a half inch pie plate made of beautiful Fire King oven glass. Guaranteed for two years against oven breakage. Its highly polished surface is as smooth as a mirror, comes clean almost instantly. It's as attractive on your table as it is sturdy and practical in your kitchen. And here's the most important point of all. This new kind of Fire King pie plate 
practically assures results every time. Its pale blue glass absorbs oven heat so evenly that your pies bake all the way through. The crust is light and flaky with no danger of scorching. Now, to get this new pie plate, it's not necessary to sit down and write a letter. Simply go to your favorite five and ten cent store or any other store selling household glass and ask for the special Fire King oven glass pie plate being offered over the air at 25 cents or slightly more in distant cities. Remember the name, Fire King Oven Glass. This new Fire King Oven Glass pie plate is a product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. You're certainly a pretty picture, Casey. Two black eyes, a lump on your jaw. You don't have to give me a bruise-by-bruise bruise description of how I look, Ethelbert. I know Ethelbert, how I Ethelbert, that big Senegalese prize fighter might have killed him. Oh. I know how you feel, pal, but you've gone at this thing all wrong. Rough stuff will get you nowhere. That's great. You got any suggestions? Uh, no. Captain Logan says there's nothing he can do, huh? What can the cops do unless they can prove that Nazi got Mr. Phelan's money and got it under false pretense? Must be some way to get evidence. Why doesn't Logan detail one of his dicks to pose as a sucker and pass this Nazi a couple of marked bills? Well, that's been tried several times, but Nazi's too wise. Casey, huh? I might be able to get the goods on Fata Nazi. But you? Yeah. No one would ever take me for a cop. I could go to Nazi and tell him I'd lost a, a sister, for instance. And I'd let him believe that I had some money, and he'd work his racket on me, and then I'd pass him marked bills, and we'd have him. Sure, it'd be a cinch, Casey. Oh, yeah. It'd be a complete bust, that's oh, what it'd why? be. Oh, now, why? Do you think anybody gets into Narzi's joint unless he knows who they are and all about them, Annie? You see, it's part of his racket to have the lowdown on people who come to him. Oh, you mean he'd look me up and find out I'm Ann Williams, who works for the Morning Express? Yeah, he sure would. Say, wait a minute. I've got an idea. Hmm? What? Burke was telling me some of his recent family history a few days before I went to Detroit. He can give us the gimmick we need behind this thing. Burke? You're sitting at it? Yeah. Boy, and will he do it when he sees it as the build-up for an exclusive feature story? Annie, come on. We're talking to Burke right now. You're right, Casey. It's a natural. Williams, you'll check into an uptown hotel here tomorrow night as Marilyn Phillips of Portland, Oregon. Which is the real name and home address of your wife's first cousin, right? Yes, as Casey remembered my telling him, Marilyn lost her mother several months ago. Where's Miss Phillips now, though, Bert? Traveling in Mexico, so that'll be all right. She's about your size and coloring, Williams. I'll have my wife tell you enough about Marilyn Phillips tonight so that you can borrow her identity without any chance of a slip-up. When this Spader Nazi checks her, he'll think you're the real McCoy. Well, how will I get to Nazi? I can't just walk up to his front you door. You get to him the same way Dad Phelan did. You go to Jameson's occult bookshop and become a steady customer. The old dame who runs the place is probably a shill for Nazi. Oh, I get it. I pose as a grief-stricken daughter with, with money and let her and him do the rest. That's the play. After you check into the hotel as Marilyn Phillips, you're not to come near this office, near your apartment... Or with anyone you know, till this job's finished. Uh, wait a minute now, Burke, you mean... Uh... I mean especially that she can't go anywhere near you, Casey. That'd give the whole show away. Oh, I didn't think of that. I'll see that you receive plenty of expense money, Williams. You report to me by phone. That's all. Uh, she, she can talk to me by phone, too. Well, what does she want to talk to you for? Yes, why should I? Well, I thought I might be able to help or something. Burke. We'll attend to everything. Sure, Casey. I'll attend to everything. Oh, that's just swell. Good it is. Burke speaking. Uh, it's me, Burke. I'm getting acquainted with Mrs. Jameson, but she hasn't suggested I see our man yet. You've only been on the job ten days. This will take time. Stick with it. <laughs> Casey, what on earth has happened to Miss Williams? It's almost three weeks since I've seen her in here. And Miss I... Williams is away, Ethelbert. And who cares? Hey, you don't have to bite my head off. You've been coming in here for over a month now, Miss Phillips. I feel that I know you well enough to offer a suggestion that...